These people are making hundreds to thousands of dollars doing the most low effort side hustle and today I'll be teaching you guys how you can do the exact same thing. It's called Amazon KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing and it's just a fancier way of stating creating books with minimal amount of effort. Now later in this video I'll actually show you step by step on how you can publish your first book on Amazon using a program called BookBowl. But before we get into that let's talk about how KDP actually works. So this side hustle has been around for quite a long time, but don't get me wrong, it is still quite lucrative. It actually originated from Amazon themselves, enabling authors to publish their books or do print on demand with absolute ease. Before, creating a book was quite a task. Whether it came to the production of the book or shipping the book out, there's a whole bunch of steps within the process, but Amazon's new program basically takes care of everything. All you need to do is upload your book to the platform platform and Amazon takes care of everything else. And as if this side hustle can get easier with the program we're using in today's video, Book Bowl, they will literally create the book for you so you legitimately don't have to do anything. But enough talking, let's get into the tutorial on how you guys can get started selling books on Amazon using Book Bowl. Alrighty, let's get into this tutorial. So as stated earlier, we're going to be using Book Bowl, which is a fantastic program that automates the creation of these books and literally makes it so easy easy to make your own book. Now there are a ton of features within Book Bowl and I'll try and go over them briefly but still explain what they all do. So in a link down in the description I'll have the link to Book Bowl and you can follow along with me. I believe they have a trial period as well but basically when you get to the website there's going to be two different options. You're going to have the research tab and then the create tab. We're going to first focus on the research tab because the most important thing when creating your own book is actually doing research into what what books are going to sell the most amount of products so you can make the most amount of money. Obviously, you don't want to go in a niche where people just aren't searching for that type of book. Now, keep in mind, I've done a bit of research before this video, so I already know the type of book I want to create for this tutorial. But let's say we're starting out from scratch. The best, in my opinion, way to find quality books or books that are doing well, good competitor research is going to the cloud option on the research tab in Book Bowl. And from this cloud option, you're able to see the best performing books within a niche on Amazon. So in today's video, the type of book I want to create is a puzzle book, which BookBolt is fantastic for doing. So we're going to go to the category and we are going to change it to a puzzle book. And you can see you can change it from the top 100 to top 500. I only want the best of the best. So I'm going to change it to the top 100. The BSR range, we are going to make very slim. And basically what a BSR range is, it's a rating that is given by Amazon and it's basically your ranking in how well you are selling your product in a specific niche. So we want to only see the best of the best in this specific niche. So we're going to do it super small, which is what I recommend. Then you can add in some keywords for my book that I'm going to be creating in this tutorial. I kind of want like a Halloween themed puzzle book. So the keyword I'm going to add is going to be Halloween. And with all that set in place, we're going to hit search and it's going to bring up a bunch of our our competitors for the book that we're going to be creating today. So as you can see, since we want to create a Halloween puzzle book, we're getting a bunch of autumn Halloween themed puzzle book where they literally have Halloween in their title. As you can see, Halloween, 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 and the search keeps going on. Keep in mind, the lower you go, the less quality of books. So I'd really look at like the top three books that come up and it shows a whole bunch of data on these books, like when the books were produced, the BSR rating, which we were talking about earlier, the price in which these books are selling at, and then an estimated monthly sales. So about how many sales they're getting per month. And you can just see it from some of these books, which bear in mind were created very recently. A lot of these, like less than a couple weeks ago on some of these are making a ton of money. So for example, if we take this Halloween crossword puzzle book, which is going for 939 on Amazon. And if we do 939 times 200, we get roughly $2,000 and keep in mind that they uploaded this book less than a month ago. So they've made about two grand on this book in less than a month. And this book probably took them a hour to create. So two grand in one hour is pretty decent. And that's what we're going to be trying to replicate today. So because I view this book as one of my competitors, I'm going to hit that favorite button and it's going to add it to my favorites, which I can check at any time later down the line if I see a book that I 
I like. Now, another feature I really like is the keywords feature, which you can click on the left side here. And basically you'll just type in a keyword. I typed in Halloween puzzles and these are all the different keywords that come up. So I definitely recommend to sort by Amazon searches. And then with this data, we can add something similar like this to our title later down the line. This is why doing research into the book that you're going to create is so important so that you know what's getting searched the most so that you can get the most amount of profit. Now keep in mind that 10,000 Amazon searches actually isn't a whole bunch compared to other niches. So this is why I'd recommend really just doing research on different keywords that could be potentially profitable. Now they do have a whole bunch of other research options, which you guys can definitely go and explore if you want to. But because we already have our topic or our niche decided, I'm going to get right into creating our actual book, which is so easy to do. So you can do this by switching from research to create, and then you'll see the book bolt studio. And this is going to be the studio that you can create your books with. Now, something I did forget to mention before we're going into create our actual book is that on the research tab, they have a live call every single week. And if you have a book bolt account, you can actually view all of the other live calls on YouTube. And on these live calls, you can ask questions in the live stream and a book bolt representative will literally answer your questions. I don't see many other companies doing this. I think it's a fantastic idea, especially if you're very serious about publishing books on Amazon using book bolt. Now with that out of the way, we want to go back to research and then go to create. And then from create, we want to go and select the book bolt studio. Then you may be asked to be signed in again. Just sign in with the same book bolt account you have. Go to create project. And here we're going to create a new project. Now for the project type, this is entirely up to you. I recommend doing paperback books just because they're a lot cheaper in producing costs, meaning you're going to make more money. And I like to keep it at cover and interior for the project name. Just name it whatever your book is going to be about. Mine is just going to be very generic. Halloween puzzles 2023. Now the trim size, there's a whole bunch of different sizes and it's all just going to depend on what kind of book you want to produce. What you can do is find a competitor book that you enjoy. Like for example, this one I think is a great product. And looking at the dimensions here, it's 21.6 by 27.9. And so an 8.5 times 11 trim size might be the best option for us. And if we go to the trim size, you can find that exact same size right down here. If you don't even find your trim size, don't worry. You can just add a custom size and put whatever inch on the height and width that you please. Now, next thing you can adjust is the bleed. I recommend keeping it at bleed and not selecting no bleed. And then you have the page count. Keep in mind, you can change this later on, but I'm going to keep our page count at 24. And then we're going to create our project. And here you are on the cover page. And it basically shows everything that's going to be placed on your cover. So you have the barcode at the bottom right here. And the red zone is where you can put your background images, but make sure to not put any text or anything important as it could get cut off. The black line is going to be the final trim line. And then you have these blue dashed lines down the center, which is going to be the fold of your book. Now, Book Bolt has a ton of different options like adding in elements, text boxes, images, and we'll go over that later. But for the cover, I do recommend using like Canva or Photoshop to really make your cover stand out that much more. Obviously, if you're super creative with using different shapes and drawing, you definitely could create something awesome in Book Bolt itself, but I just found it much easier to create cover on something like Mid Journey and then bring it over to Book Bolt. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to file library here and I'm going to upload an image. And there we go. With my image uploaded, I'm just going to select it. And this looks like it would be a good Halloween cover. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to edit this in Photoshop, mainly because the left side is going to be the back of the book and the right side is going to be the front of the book. And our title would get cut off right down the middle, which is not what we want already. So I just went into Photoshop and adjusted the sizing of my cover. So now I'm going to re upload it. And there we go. Perfect. I made sure to go over the black lines too. So keep that in mind. And if you're curious on how I made this art, I did not other than adding in the text here and then adding in the circles and the text up there. And you can do this without Photoshop. You could use a free program like Canva, or you could maybe even do a book bowl if you just maybe added in a shape over top and changed it to the same color as you can see right here. And yeah, you literally probably could have done this in book bowl as well. So now we have the cover 
ever done, it's surprisingly going to be the hardest part of this process and I'm not even kidding. So for our first page, because this is a puzzle book that we're creating, let's just get right into it. We don't need any introduction. We don't need any text talking about the puzzles. We're just going to add our first puzzle and we can do this by going to the puzzle piece right here. And then you'll see a whole bunch of different things you could add to your book. So you can see there's puzzles down here, but there's also like tracking sheets. There are blank graphs. There are people that literally sell blank graphs on Amazon and are making absolute bang which is just completely ridiculous but hey when i was saying that this side hustle was easy i was not kidding so we're going to go to the word puzzle hashtag here and it's going to bring up a bunch of different puzzles we can add to our puzzle book now on our specific puzzle book i intend to add word search hangman missing vowel crossword and word scramble so let's start off with a simple word search and when i click on word search it's going to give me the option to add to whatever page i want to add to and you can even go and do the whole first half obviously that's not what i want what i want is this to be evenly divided so if we're going to do five different puzzles and there's 24 different pages i'm going to do about five pages for each puzzle and then one's going to have four so i'm going to hit next here it's going to give me a bunch of different options so what color we want the word font i'm going to make mine actually black or like a dark black so more of a dark gray here just so our text tops a lot more i'm going to keep the cell color as white now there's a whole bunch of different options that you guys can change from like capital letters or no capital letters I'm going to take capital letters off and then for clue words how they're sorted I'm going to keep it short to long now the most important thing you need to change within this page is going to be the CSV file and I'll show you how to create a CSV file as well as use AI to help you insert words into your puzzle to just make this whole process that much easier so you want to go to your Google Google account and then go to Google Sheets. And then on Google Sheets, you just want to type in all of the different words you want to be used in your puzzle. So for example, our puzzle is going to be a Halloween puzzle. So we'll do skeleton, hit enter, pumpkin, hit enter. And we're just going to keep on going down until we insert enough words that it will fill up our whole puzzle. Now you can do this manually or you can use ChatGPT, which I'll show in a bit here. But the way to save your file in spreadsheets so easy just go to file download and then as a comma separated values file or csv and then when i save this file i can go ahead and upload it right here now like i was stating i like to use ChatGPT to insert the words because it's just that much easier and it speeds up and automates the process and then in ChatGPT, i'm going to ask can you list out 30 words that are halloween related and no more than 20 characters each and ChatGPT instantly gave us 30 different halloween related words which is perfect for our puzzle. Then I'm going to bring it over to our spreadsheet and I'm just going to paste that list in and there we go. We have a full CSV file with words we can use in our puzzle. I'm going to get rid of two or actually three different ones here just because they have dashes and I don't really find dashes work well in puzzles. So now we actually have 27 in our CSV file, but it doesn't really matter. So once again, we're going to go to download as a CSV file and then I'm just going to upload it right here. So we have our CSV file uploaded. And one thing I'm actually going to do before we head to next is change the amount of words that are on each puzzle. So I'm going to change mine from five to 11, just so there's more words that people can solve with. So we're going to go to next, and then it's going to ask where you want the solution pages. Now, I don't want any solution pages. Unfortunately, Bookbolt wants you to select at least one solution page. So we're just going to put six as the only solution page, but there's a workaround to this because because what we can do is just clear the solution page after just because I don't want any answers for my puzzle book. I just want it to be straight puzzles. And yeah, there you go. All of our first five pages are added into our book and that literally took two minutes. It just goes to show you how easy this is and we're going to repeat this entire process for all of the next puzzles. And what I can do is let's say I have a logo for my book and I want to apply it to the bottom right corner 
corner of every single page. You can do this by going to image and then I'm going to go to Pixabay and I just searched up pumpkin here and I'm going to select the first option that comes up. Then we're just going to adjust our pumpkin so that it appears in the bottom right corner. I'm actually going to change this to another page because it's best if you do it on pages that don't already have anything on it. So now that we have our logo here in the bottom right, what we can do is right click the page and select clone this page. And then we're just going to select all of our pages except for the first puzzles that we've already created. I'm going to select clone and select OK. And then now you can see our little pumpkin is added to all of these different pages. So this is just a cool idea you guys could apply to your books. You have some type of personal logo for this Halloween puzzle book. I don't have one, so I'm not going to do that, but that always is an option. Alrighty, so I'm going to add in a, another puzzle by going to the puzzle piece icon, going to our puzzle, and we're going to do a word scramble this time. And once again, the settings for your puzzle are going to look pretty similar. You can adjust the margins and whatnot. I wouldn't recommend adjusting any of that. I'm just going to adjust our color and I'm going to keep it consistent. I believe it was at 53, 53. 353 and then we're going to upload a csv file this time i'm going to find more halloween related words so i'm going to ask chat can you get 30 different words for me and it's going to come up with 30 different halloween related words Alrighty, so i just learned this sometime later but for the solution all you have to do is select the solution placement and change it to no solution and then you won't have to add the solutions to your puzzle pretty simple fix that i just did not realize at first. Alrighty, so I ended up chopping off a couple pages just to get this video finished. But the next thing we can do is just spice up our book just a little bit. I don't want to put too much effort into it, but I just want to add some fun elements to our puzzles just to make them appeal to the masses so they're not just boring with this white space. You can see in the top left, the top right, and the bottom right here. So what we can do is just add in some images. So for example, that pumpkin we had earlier, my just include a nice little pumpkin in the right side here and obviously you could put a bit more effort into it you could deem it so if the words are related to i don't know countries you put the country flag in the bottom right it's all up to you i'm just going to grab some different images to a few different pages to spice it up already so i spiced it up with a few images and i think we are good to go the next thing you want to do is visit this link which will be linked down in the description and we are just going to select join KDP and you're going to have to create a Kindle direct publishing account with your own information. Alrighty, once you sign in, you'll just have to agree to this agreement. Alrighty, so I just finished dialing all of my tax information and now I can go and select this massive yellow button that states create. There are different options we can create. So we can do an ebook, paperback, hardcover, or a series page. I'm going to go with the paperback. Now on the paperback, you just want to fill in the following information. So starting with the book title, I'd recommend going to Amazon, seeing what your competitors are titling their books, and then taking some ideas from that. So I titled mine Haunted Puzzles Book, Halloween 2023, Word Search, Hangman, Crossword, and more. Then it asks for subtitles. So I just call it the best variety Halloween activity book with many pages. And ours isn't a series, so we're not going to add that. The edition number, it's going to be the first edition, so we'll just add one. Then you can add your author name. It doesn't have to be your real name. It could be your stage name, so we're going to create a stage name for myself. Then you can add any contributors. We're not going to do that. Next is going to be the description. I suggest just looking how other people format their descriptions. I think this is a really good format and use a lot of keywords. Make sure to use keywords in your description. That is going to be incredibly important to make things easier. I'm just going to ask ChatGBT to reword this description. And there we go. We have a reworded version, so it's not an exact copy. And then all we need to change is the different things they're going to find in this activity book. Already, so I'm finished the description. I added in my unique things they'll find in this book. Now, you want to state that you own the copyright because you do. And obviously, you want to select no on this unless for whatever reason your puzzle book is. And then you want to change 
range the youngest and oldest age for the young age i would literally do like one i'd set that as the minimum and then the maximum i would set to 18 plus so this basically means anyone can enjoy this book next it's going to ask you if it's a low content book and i would state this actually technically doesn't qualify under their definition of a low content book because there is content in our puzzles it's not like a replicated book that is identical page after page after page there is some variety then you can choose the category so if your puzzle book or whatever book you're creating is under some type of category you can select that i don't believe holidays is a category so i'm just not going to add one here then finally you can add in keywords and the keywords i would use is just go back find your competitors see what they're trying to add into their title and then put those in your keywords you can see like word puzzles or halloween or maybe even like a number for how many words are in your puzzle could be all good ideas to add into your keywords it gives you seven options and i recommend using all seven i'm gonna hit save and continue next is going to ask for your isbn if you already have one great if not don't even worry about it just ask it to assign you one which we're going to do right now then it's going to ask for your publication date i'm going to set mine for tomorrow and then it's going to ask if your book is black and white like what are the printing ink options ours is obviously fine if it's black and white on the interior now next it's going to ask for your trim size and make sure you have the exact same trim size as the book that you created on book bowl and you can find that trim size at the bottom here so ours is 7.44 by 9.69 and we can find that option right here then it's going to ask for the bleed settings we are going to set that to bleed and then you can go for a matte finish or a gloss finish this is all preference i like a matte finish so we'll go with that next it's going to ask you to upload the paperback manuscript and i'm going to upload the pdf and if you're curious on how i got that pdf all you have to do is go to book bolt studios then go to download then go to printed books and it will download a file like the one that you see on screen and then i just extracted it so that i got a folder like so and then i just uploaded the interior make sure it's the interior and not the cover and i'm going to do the same thing for the cover so we're going to upload our cover file i'm going to go back to those downloads and i'm going to find the cover and we're just going to select open make sure you don't check this box as book bolts not going to include that barcode and you want amazon to do that for you and it's going to ask if you use any ai generated content honestly i don't know if i'd select yes or no for this one just because they're stating that they're just curious as to how many people are using ai to create their books but i don't know why i have this like sneaky suspicion that they're going to try and not promote books that are created with ai but i don't know i could be totally wrong here i'm just going to go with no lastly we have the previewer and i recommend launching this just to see that everything with your book looks correctly so unfortunately i'm just now realizing this but your book must be at least 24 pages so it looks like i'm gonna have to go back and add some more pages to my book so i'm gonna do that off screen and i'll be right back in just a second already so i'm back and i uploaded my new book with 24 pages and as you guys can see see we have our brand new book which is awesome so i'm going to hit approve here and here you can see the printing cost per book which is very very cheap and we're going to go and save and continue now the next thing is going to be the pricing where you can adjust to whatever you want to list your product for now using the book wall research you can go back and see what other books were selling for in your niche so that you can price yours in a price range where you're going to make money but it's not going to be too expensive expensive that people just are not buying your product so i'm just gonna make my book 750 and if we charge 750 american we're gonna be making back a dollar 60 cents on each individual book we sell which ultimately is not a ton of money so maybe you want to increase the book to nine dollars a book just so you get a higher royalty so let's see what 950 is and we'll get almost three dollars per book which is a lot better and if you wanted to you could adjust the price individually for a specific currency so let's say canadian i wanted to charge even more than 12 dollars. i could do that if i wanted to but i'm just going to leave as is and we are going to publish our paperback book now it's going to take up to 72 hours to be available on amazon
Amazon before people can actually purchase it. Additionally, you can request a book to come to your house to see if the book looks well in person. So that's always an option. I'm not going to do that for this book as I didn't really put a lot of effort into it, but we're going to hit publish our paperback book. And yeah, that is how easy it is to publish a book on Amazon. It is without a doubt the easiest side hustle to get into. And I hope you guys enjoyed this thorough tutorial. If you did, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, check out Book Bowl. The links will be down below and have yourselves a fantastic day.